Hello friends, welcome back to our channel. So in today's session, we'll discuss about uh, one more normal form that is uh, 2NF, second normal form. So this is a one more level of uh, normalization in order to avoid the redundancies and uh, overcome the anomalies. So in the previous session we have seen about the 1NF that is the first normal form where uh, the relation should not contain the multiple values for a single attribute. So if there are any multiple values for a single attribute just we have, we have to insert a new rows and we have to avoid the uh, multiple values. And coming to the second normal form, the input for this second normal form is relation relation with 1 in f so that is the first constraint that is first condition so if you want to check for the 2 in f so the relation should satisfy the 1 in f condition okay so this is also called as a 2 in f the second normal form is also known as a 2 in right and the output the output for this one is relation with the 2 nf is a relation that means the relation which satisfies the conditions of 2 nf right now we will see the conditions conditions need to be satisfied to say uh, the whether the relation is in 2 nf or not right so the first condition is the relation should be in 1 nf so first we have to check whether the relation is in 1NF or not. So if not, first we have to achieve the 1NF. That means we have to make the relation in 1NF. That, that's the first condition. The second condition, the relation should not have partial functional dependency. partial functional dependency right so in the previous sessions we have discussed about the functional dependencies and in in that video we have discussed about the two different types of uh, functional dependencies that is a fully functional dependency and a partial functional dependency right so i will post the link in the description so that first go through that one and then you you will get a clarity about the par partial functional dependency so at a glance i will just recall the concept so for example, if any functional dependency in this format, some x comma y tends to z. So this we call it as a dependence and this uh, determinants and this is a dependent. So that means we can say z is functionally dependent on x comma y, x comma y, right? So that implies by knowing x and y values, with the help of x and y values, we can determine the z value from the relation, right? So if x comma y tends to z is a functional dependency then if it satisfies any one of these condition that means if you know the value of x if you can determine z or if you know the value of y if you determine z so any one functional dependency is true that is a partial functional dependency okay so here we are removing one attribute from the determinant and still there is a functional dependency exists that we call it as a partial functional dependency right so that we have discussed in the previous uh, sessions i will post the description so just go through that one so this is the thing so if any one of this functional dependency if any one of this one is a in functional dependency we can say it is a partial functional dependency so we have to find out this one and we have to find whether there is a partial functional dependency or not if so we have to remove that partial dependency by decomposing the relation into sub relations okay so the, rela the two conditions to satisfy whether the relation is in 2nf so that is the first the relation should be in 1nf and then the relation should not have the partial functional dependencies now let us check with a small example see let us take this example so there are three attributes in this particular relation 
so there is a student id course id course fee right so first we have to check whether there are a multi valued attribute this is multiple values for any single attribute right so you can observe for every column we are having only one attribute so that implies this is in the, this particular relation is in 1 and f 1 and f right so we have to check whether this relation is in 2 and f or not so for that we have to find out the functional dependencies and we have to find out whether there are any partial functional dependencies so if there are any partial functional dependency automatically we say that the relation is not in 2 and f so that we have to avoid that partial functional dependency that means we have to remove the partial functional dependency so that this relation will become the 2 nf that means uh, we have to decompose this relation to the sub relation so that it will be uh, in 2 nf right now let us check with the functional dependencies so i will take the functional dependencies so student id tends to course id and uh, student id tends to course fee and uh, course id tends to course fee and uh, student id comma course id tends to course fee student id course fee tends to course id course id right and then course fee comma course id tends to student id right so these are the possible cases now we can check whether there is a functional dependency or not for all the things so functional dependency means on the left hand side the determinant and right hand side is the dependent whether cid is dependence on the functional dependent on the determinant or not that means we have uh, we have studied about this functional dependency in the previous session so we have to check for one constraint that uh, we have to consider two random tuples so that the x value or equal if both the tuples are having the same x value the corresponding y values also should be same then only we can say there is a functional dependency so once just go through the functional dependency concept uh, video right so here let us take student id and course id student id let us take a two tuples 101 and 101 so here 101 let us take 101 and 101 two tuples x value is 101 101 and here we are getting java as a course id and here we are getting c++ as a course id so there is a redundancy so we can't say this is as a functional dependent right so considering two different uh, x values there should be corresponding y values then only we can say that it's a functional dependency so here there is no functional dependency so this is not a functionally dependent now let us check this one student id and course fee student id again you can check for the first tuple and second tuple so here i will write it the numbering okay so you will be understanding so consider the first uh, tuple and the third tuple so again we are having 101 and 101 so corresponding course fee 101 course fee is some 10000 and 101 2000 so here for the same x value we are getting different y values so this is also not functionally dependent so we can't say this is a functionally dependent right consider this one course id and course fee so consider see first one and fifth one so first one and fifth one we are having the x value as java so what is the corresponding y value here 10000 for the first tuple and coming to the fifth tuple again it is a 10000 yes so both are x values both x values are same and corresponding y values also same consider yes so that's the only thing we uh, that is repeated in the table java and java so all the remaining are unique so we can say this as a functionally dependent okay so this is one functional dependent right and now let us consider these things so we need to bother about these functionally dependents because we have to eliminate the partial functional dependency so when we will get the partial functional dependency if the determinant is having some set of attribute then only we can say we can we can say the partial functional dependency and the full functional dependency but here the determinant is only one attribute so we can't say it is 
it as a partial or a full, full functional dependency okay there will be no partial dependency it's a full functional dependency now coming to this one student id and course id combinedly determines the course fee okay so don't uh, think it has a two different attributes okay two different attributes giving to the same thing so this the meaning of this particular functional dependency means by knowing the student id and course id the combination of student id and course id it should give the value of course fee let us check so 101 student id java okay 102 python 101 c++ 103 c 103 java 102 javascript so all are different all are different all are unique there is no repetition so we have to consider these two student id and course id so is there any relation i mean is there any redundancy for these two 101 java is there any 101 java there is nothing 102 python no 101 c++ no 100 c no 103 and java 102 and python, uh, javascript there is no redundancy so we simply we can say this is also a functionally dependent this is also also a functionally dependent because by knowing these two things we can get the course fee uniquely and coming to the student id and course fee student id and course fee check student id and course fee 101 and 10000 is there any repetition for 101 and 10000 no no 102 and 15000 no 103 and uh, one, 103 and 10000 yes See, 103 and 10,000, 4 and 5. So, 4 and 5, 103 with 10,000, 103 and with 10,000. So, you can observe the 4th tuple and 5th tuple. 4th tuple and 5th tuple. 103, 10,000, 103, 10,000. So, here we are having some C and here we are having some Java. So, same X value gives a different Y values. So, we can't consider it as a functional dependence. So, this is not a functional dependence. Just we can strike off. So, this is not... This is not and this is also not a functionally dependent. Coming to this one, course fee and course ID gives to student ID. Let us check course fee and course ID. So 10,000 in Java. Yes. Is there any repetition? Yes. 10,000 in Java. So first tuple and fifth tuple. So first tuple from first tuple, what is the thing? Course fee. 10,000 and Java. And next to fifth tuple. Yes. Fifth tuple. 5th tuple. So, 5th tuple is also gives the same thing 10,000 and Java. So, what about the Y values? Both, are, both X values are same. What about the Y values? So, Y values are, so 10,000 and Java gives 101, student ID 101 and from the 5th tuple, again 10,000 and Java gives the student ID 103. So, for the same X value, there are different Y values. So, this is also not correct. This is also not correct. I mean, this is also not a functionally dependent. Now, so among these two, we can consider the second one because here we are having a set of attributes in the X value. That means a determinants. Okay, in the determinant, uh, uh, I mean, in the determinant, we are having a multiple values. So this is like X comma Y tends to Z. See, X comma Y tends to Z. So what we have done? So we have to check for x tends to z and y tends to z, whether these two are functionally dependent or not. So if any one of these things is a functionally dependent, we can say it is a partial functional dependent. So now let us check. So from this one, let us check student id gives a course fee. Similarly, course id gives the course fee. So if any one of these functional, these uh, Functionally dependent, if this relation is a functionally dependent, then we can say it is a partial functional. Student ID tends to course fee. Student ID and course fee. So 101, 10,000. Here 101, 2,000. So this is not a functionally dependent. And coming to this one, course ID tends to course fee. Already it is a functionally dependent. Right? So here, we are removing one attribute from the determinant. We are removing one attribute from the determinant. Still, it exists the functionally dependent. So obviously, it will be the partial functional dependent. So here, we in this case, we are checking for both the cases. That means we are removing one attribute and we are checking for the functional functionally dependent. So it satisfies the functionally dependence concept, right? Then we can say it is a partially functional dependent. So this relation is having 
partial functional dependency so that means this is not in 2nf this is not in 2nf so how we can get this 2nf so we have to decompose this table in two different relations okay we have to decompose this to two different relations so this is a functionally dependent so obviously we can say it is a partially functionally dependent partially functionally dependent so we can simply say not in 2nf not in 2nf right so now we have to divide or decompose the relation to two different relations sub relations so what are the sub relations where we got the uh, this one so student id and uh, course id is one table course id and uh, course fee is another table coming to the student id so 101 java 102 python 101 c++ 103 c 103 java 102 javascript so this is one relation this is the only one relation okay we are decomposing the complete relation into two sub relations this is one relation and course id so java python c++ c javascript so here there will be no redundancy you can observe so we are having some six uh, tuples but here we are having only five tuples because java is repeated the same course fee value same course fee value so which is 10000 and for this one python it is a 15000 and c++ it is a 2000 and for the c it is again 10000 and for javascript it is a 20000 so you can observe here some sort of redundancy has been reduced right so here we are having some six columns and here we are having some five columns i mean five rows rows right so like this we have to decompose the complete relation into a sub relation so now you can say these two relations are in 2nf because there are no partial dependencies so again you can check for 1nf and 2nf for these particular sub relations if there are more number of attributes and again you have to check for 1nf and 2nf so whether it is 1nf then we have to check for 2nf right so again you have to check for partial dependencies whether there are any partial dependencies in this particular sub relation or not so if there are any partial functional dependencies automatically we have to remove this partial functional dependencies that means by decomposing further decomposing the relation into sub relations so this is how we we have to uh, satisfy the relation with 2nf the first one the relation should be in 1nf the second one the relation should not have any partial functional dependencies so once again i'm i'm saying that the just uh, view the links of uh, partial i mean functional dependency concepts so i will give the complete playlist in the description section go through that so uh, listen to the functional dependency concept what is a functional dependency and uh, what is the full uh, full functional dependency partial functional dependency types of functional dependency and then it would be very easy for you to understand this particular normalization concept so either it is 1nf 2nf 3nf 4nf etc etc so first visit the functional dependency make uh, just understand the concept of functional dependency so it will be very easy for you right so the link will be given in the description so go through that one before watching this video right so hope you understood this one and if you are having any doubts regarding this uh, two second normal form so feel free to post your doubts in the comment section definitely i will try to clarify all your doubts if you really enjoyed my session like my session share my session with your friends and don't forget to subscribe to our channel thanks for watching thank you very much